Good morning, good afternoon. Oh, good morning, Robert. Can you state your full name and date of birth for the record for me? Okay. We had a hearing this Monday on August the 5th. The court had entered a scheduling order and notice of hearings. Ma'am, that was sent to you by way of mail. Did you receive that? I did yesterday. Okay. All right. I know that you had brought up concerns regarding mailing, and I just wanted to go through uh, the, the historics with regard to the mailing. As you may recall, back on June 28th, we had a hearing where I granted Ms. Cushman's motion to withdraw and addressed your forfeiture, or alternatively, a waiver to counsel. You were hand-delivered a copy of that order. On May 25, we had a hearing, and an order was entered, and a notice of hearing was set. That order was hand-delivered to you. Thereafter, there was an order setting hearing that was entered on July 29. That letter, or that order rather, was sent to you at P.O. Box 9109, Seminole, Florida, 33775, which is the Orange County Corrections Department mail address for general inmate mail. That was remedied the next day. On July 30th, a certificate of service was entered to the appropriate address uh, identifying you, your inmate number, FDC-B4, P.O. Box 4970, Orlando, Florida, 32802, which is the um, address that you placed in your motion and your notice. That certificate of service included the notice of filing of the memorandum from the Orange County Corrections Department, Security Operations, and there was also a certificate of service providing you the Justice Administrative, Administrative Commission's response to motion seeking due process costs. The next mailings was a notice of mailing of documents by your former attorney, Patricia Cashman, which was the transcripts of depositions of detectives Chelsea Copsell and Scott Lowen, which were taken on May 7th, 2024. That was e-filed on, e on August the 1st, 2024, and emailed to you, I'm sorry, mailed to you with address to you, your inmate number, FDC Dorm B, P.O. Box 9. 4970, I apologize, P.O. Box 4970, Orlando, Florida. Did you receive those deposition transcripts? I did. Okay. Then the notice of delivery, would you recall when you received those transcripts? Oh, everything that you are stating was received on Monday. The 5th? Correct. Okay. The next was a notice of delivery of digital copies of documents that was e-filed by your former attorney, Patricia Cashman, on August 1, 2024, which provided the transcripts of depositions of detectives Chelsea Copsell and Scott Lowen taken May 7, 2024, to Billy Lane on August 1st, and that was mailed to you at the same address. Uh, we've been addressing P.O. Box 4970 on August 1. Did you receive that notice? I'm sorry, what was sent that for? Notice of delivery of digital copies of documents, which reflected the deposition transcripts of the detectives I just identified to Mr. Lane. To be honest with you, I don't know. It was a lump sum of a, a giant amount of paperwork, and I haven't gone through it yet. Okay. They had me sign about four or five different documents, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. For receipt. Poor thing. And the last was a certificate of service that was just e-filed on May the 5th, which was provided to you as well on May, the, I'm sorry, August the 5th. It was provided to you on August the 5th at the P.O. box we've identified by way of U.S. mail, which was a copy of the order authorizing the defense to incur costs for private investigator and the scheduling order and notice of hearings entered August 5, 2024. Have you received both of those? I did, and I had questions on that, please, whenever. In, in just a moment now. So I know That's that right. there was a concern with Fantastic. regard to mailing and things purportedly not being timely provided to you. There was only one order, the order of July 29th, which was sent to the general mail delivery, and that was remedied the exact next day on July 30th. So that clerical error as to the wrong address was remedied one day after the original order was sent out on July the 29th. I just wanted to put that on the record and, uh, again, identify for you, ma'am, that nothing's being withheld from you and everything is being timely served to you um, as required. Now, you had questions about the JAC order. I will revisit those in just a moment. I've got a, a sticky with regard to that. And I was going to say, please, if I may, about the address. There were two or three different documents that were uploaded to the tablet. So those three documents, without knowing specifically which ones they are, those were also sent to P.O. Box 9101. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you were talking about supposedly just one document that was mailed to the incorrect address. Sorry. It was more than one. That's not correct. 
Ooh, court scouted yeah. the court file this morning, ma'am. The court has not filed anything other than what I've identified since that June 28th order where you were representing yourself pro se. So that is incorrect. Is it something that I need to record and bring back, or is it that big of a deal? Uh, I can't answer that question. That may call for me providing you legal advice. Okay. But I can't tell you that other than the July 29th order, which was remedied the next day, everything has been sent to the appropriate legal uh, mail address as provided by the Orange County Jail. Um, so we've had this hearing today to address a couple of things based on the scheduling order and notice of hearing that was entered August 5. The first was the, uh, the digital evidence issue. Uh, I've been advised, I think, through Mr. Lane, who I do see in the courtroom. Um, Mr. Lane, if you could come on up, sir, so Madam Clerk can swear you in. I'm sorry, i got to say something for a minute. Because, you know, I've been, I've been trying to be, well, just with my talking, lenient, Sarah, but this hearing really got on my nerves because, well, you will, well, if you probably already seen it, but, you know, she has something to say about everything, you know, and I love how Judge Cranick, you know, she might say something, goes, okay, wait a minute, though, because he gets her to stay on topic. She wants to go down all these different rabbit holes, which I'm guilty of, but I also didn't zip up my boyfriend in a suitcase and kill him either or hurt him, you know, I don't like him. But so she's going to have an argument about everything, every single thing. And I don't know if it was just because I was tired last night when I was watching it or no, I don't think that's it. I think that's just how she is. And it's just, it's just so freaking annoying. Okay, here we go. drive to you, Mr. Lane. I want to hear from the state with regard to that first. So either Mr. J or Mr. Castori. Yes, Your Honor. We have uh, tendered to Mr. Lane uh, a copy of our uh, the exhibit list uh, with our uh, expected items of evidence that will be received along with uh, expected witnesses that, uh, to be called at the trial. Uh, a copy of that was provided on the USB with the exhibits, the witness list, um, also proposed uh, jury instructions and a stipulation as to victim ID for her uh, review as well. Okay. And when was that provided to Mr. Lane? Uh, just now. Okay. All right. Um, the witness and exhibit list that is um, included on that USB, do you have hard copies? I do, Your Honor. I would like to file them in open court. That was going to be my next question. Okay. And I have a copy for defense. Okay. Very good. Um, Debbie Bruce, if we can get the copy of the witness list and the exhibits uh, and take that from Mr. Lane and provide it to Ms. Boone. And, you, and Your Honor, uh, the state's position is that given that our exhibit list contains within it a witness list as well, we would ask that that uh, document be sealed uh, the way the witness lists are routinely sealed. Uh, a copy of that request to seal is the, uh, there with the, the notice of the witness list uh, on the, uh, the initial page before the, uh, our notice of the exhibit list. What I have in front of me is the notice of provision of witness list and then the notice of expected evidence and witnesses in trial. I don't have an order or it's, it's, it wouldn't be an order. It would just be the, that first document you read on okay. reference, the notice of provisional witness list. Got it. Okay, thank you. All right. Anything else with regard to the expected evidence and digital evidence? No. Okay, so just for my own understanding, there are nine files on the USB drive. 
that are digital in nature. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Okay, all right. And those are all on the USB drive that is going to be provided to Ms. Boone? Yes, they're, they're broken down by folders. And the folders, or the <laughs> names of the folders, do they match the names in the digital evidence list? Uh, they, they roughly match. Uh, I believe that uh, on there, there may be some slight uh, change of terminology uh, from, I believe, uh, files found on iPhone as opposed to suitcase uh, videos and still shot. <laughs> Okay. Oh boy. I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh because the suitcase is horrible. I'm not laughing at what she did to George. I'm laughing because, I don't know, when they said suitcase vi video, I've got a very dark, twisted humor, and I don't know. It's just like, could you see her saying, I object. We should throw that out. That's not evidence. Oh, boy. State anything else to add with regard to the digital evidence? Uh, no, I also have a copy of the thumb drive as well as Mr. Lane has had an opportunity to, to copy for his client that I can tender uh, to, I can tender to Mr. Lane to tender to his client. Is that different than we've already given him? He had an opportunity to copy it, but this would be uh, yeah. their copy to retain. Okay, all right. So you can go ahead and provide that. Do you want to mark that as an exhibit for the purposes of the hearing? I guess not, since it's going to be transferred to directly to Mr. Lane. Correct. Okay, all right. You can go ahead and give that to Mr. Lane. All right. Ma'am, or Mr. Castori, any other questions? Anything else you want to bring to my attention with regard to the digital evidence? No, ma'am. Okay. Ma'am, have you had the opportunity to review the um, notice of expected evidence? Oh, boy. Here we go. This is a trial document mm -hmm. that was just provided to the court and yourself this morning. I did. Okay. Do you have any questions with regard to the digital evidence, which are paragraphs one through nine on the first and second pages of the notice? Um, I don't know what the majority of them are. Um, the Is this part of the evidence that was supplied to me on all of the USB drives that was supplied also? Yes. This is a pared down. Um, all of the items referenced uh, in our notice and provided on the USB have already been previously disclosed and uh, given to defense. Okay. What? Any other questions? Yes. Um, yes. On the USB drives for the laptop, it's not compatible with the USB drives for some of the files. So I cannot open a majority of what are on both of the USB drives. A majority. What do you mean you cannot open a majority? What can you not open? I don't know specifically which files. I know that some of them come up as videos, some of them come up as JPEG, some of them come up as different formats, but there's an entire page of multiple icons that come up and every time I try to open one, it won't let me review it. Okay, so well, I don't what know. does it say? I don't, I don't know. Um, I moved on from that to try to go to other programs, so I don't know. I figured it would be something that I might be able to speak to Billy about when he came to see me uh, early next week. So, but I'm just stating to the court now, that's one of the problems that I'm having with the laptop. But you said it's a majority, but you can't identify specifics for me. And that's what I'm trying to See, I love this because he has to redirect her because she'll say like a, she'll give like a blanket statement. And we know that it's either exaggerated or just a flat out lie. But he firmly, but respectfully redirects her. I love it trying to figure out what is it that you're not able to look at. It doesn't identify what they are because of the amount. When I click on a particular file, there's a file inside of a file inside of a file. So when I try to open one of the files, all these different icons come up. So if I try to click on one, it says unavailable. So I keep trying to go to the next one, the next one, and the next one, but they're all the same format, so I can't open any of those. Okay. And how many times has that happened? The one time one file, I, 10 files, 20 files, 50 files, or was it just the one time and then you moved on to something else? I don't know how many files were in it because I didn't bother to waste my time on trying to open. I believe I tried to open about eight or nine of them, and then I just moved on from that folder into another folder. And the other items in the other folder, were those accessible? Were those viewable? For the most part, yes. I haven't, uh -huh. I have not had a I don't know what to, for the most part means. 
I, I love it. I haven't had time yet to explore everything due to the dorm environment. So as soon mm, as... Always something. I, in the amount of information, the vast amount of information that he has on there, I'm trying to figure out a way where I can sit in it. I have a letter to you that I wrote to the captain, a copy for Great. you. So you know Yay. what I'm trying to work on in order for mm. privacy to be had. So um, I haven't explored both USB drives to the fullest uh, potential that I possibly can yet. Just from the moment that I have attempted to do so, the one problem I have had was with the one folder with many icons in it. I attempted to open about eight or nine of them, could not, so I moved on to whatever was next. Hey, I could add to that that everything that we have provided on the, this USB file, uh, we have uh, checked, it's all on standard formats. Uh, for instance, the public surveillance video that's uh, referenced uh, in our notice, uh, we included both the original uh, public's files from there. And Do you see how she's doing like, you can tell she looks pissed and she's doing this, of course, I am not an expert in body language, but I'm just saying you can tell she looks pissed and she's doing this funny thing with her lips I don't know if she's like she's wanting to say something, but she says she's trying to like make her stop or it's just a twitch or something. But you can tell that she is annoyed and she is a tough person to please. She has a complaint about everything. I don't have any patience for her in this one, even though she's, you know, she's speaking, you know, I mean, I guess she's better than Daryl, you know, because he was just like, but she's still going to have an excuse for everything. Nothing is her fault. And yeah, today is, I'm riding hard on Sarah today. I sure am. And we also had those files converted to VLC because they are easier to play in VLC. So if she clicks on that folder, she can click again on a subfolder and she will find the VLC files uh, for where the public video has been converted. So everything in there should be standard JPEG, VLC, it's uh, hard for her to have to listen. MP4 for some audio only files. Okay. All right. Um, Ma'am, do you have any other questions with regard to the digital information or digital evidence identified in the notice that the state's provided the court and yourself this morning? That was what was just handed to Mr. Lane. So, Mr. Lane, you and I would go over that when you and I need. I will, I will be meeting with you tomorrow. Is a concern that I will not be able to transfer this to the spoon through the jail protocol? I, 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 would, I, have, a, I have a remedy for that. Um, with regard to, well, let me, let me finish with the, the digital. Uh, any, any other concerns, ma'am, as to the items identified in this notice? Until I'm able to open them and see them, no, I do not. Sure, okay. State anything else we need to talk about with regard to that issue? Uh, not in regards to that issue. Okay, all right. So, um, Mr. Lane, I'm going to ask that you take possession of that jump drive that was tendered to you in court this morning, and you advise the court that you're going to be meeting with Ms. Boone tomorrow. Is that correct? Well, about approximately what time are you going to be meeting with her? If you know? I am. Okay, all right. Um, I have had the opportunity to have further conversations with Major Muhammad at the jail, including conversations regarding the physical documents. Um, Ma'am, are you, are, are you still requesting cop, uh, hard copies of the documents? I am. Okay. The jail has advised me that they've had conversations with you related to any other property or legal documents that you may need. Have you ever advised the jail that you have everything that you need and don't need anything else? No, one of the um, sergeants came and spoke to me yesterday, um, miscommunication of some sort, where I hmm, of uh, course. explained to her what I'm trying to do with purging my property and the property department so I can um, anticipate those discovery hard copies. Was that Tracy Hall? No, that was um, Hall. Her, her last name is Hall. So it was Hall, H-A-L-L, -L, correct? Yes. Okay. But someone sent her to me to see me, so I just don't know who that was. Who was it you communicated with yesterday regarding your personal effects that may have been in a property locker? Miss Hall. Okay. All right. Thank you. Do you know Miss Hall's first name? 
I don't. I don't know any of the officers. Okay. Were. All right. So in conversations with Major Muhammad, they are going to be, be able to accommodate you having your paper copies. So Mr. Lane, I know that you took custody of those and have had them. So tomorrow when you uh, meet Ms. Boone at approximately 9 a.m., you will meet Mr. Muhammad as well. Um, well, let me ask this. Are you able to go to the jail today? Okay, so I, I know for a fact that Major Muhammad is available today, and he may be expecting you to arrive today. If you are able to provide to him the banker's boxes that were identified as A and B and that jump drive, and then provide the court with a notice as to when and what time and that to whom you gave it should be Major Muhammad those items so we can file in the court file. And those will then be, the digital evidence will then be provided with the laptop in accordance with the protocol that we've gone over previously. And Major Muhammad will make sure that Ms. Boone has access to the hard copies. So after conferring, well, let me ask this. State, do you have any other position with regard to the motion that was set to be heard today, the um, defendant's motion regarding seeking for hard copies? No, okay, so for the record then, that motion will be granted, the motion for defendant to lawfully receive, review, utilize the original hard copy discovery, two boxes A and B, submitted to the court by former attorneys on June 28th, 2024, for preparation of trial in her criminal case. All right, so look, there's a win for her. She's going to get her hard copy so she can write on them and all that. And you can see the judge is keeping close records of everything because she, she's going to come back, you know, she, or else she'll come back and try to say something and then he'll say, uh, no ma'am, I've got it right here. So I, I don't, I do not, oh my gosh, I don't envy them at all because this is, this is not going to be exciting for the judge or the prosecution. This is, um, because they, everything is taking so long because they have to make sure that everything is recorded because we know how she's going to be. So she should be happy for that. That is a win for Sarah Boone. As ordered, Mr. Lane will deliver those to the jail today and seek to have them delivered to uh, Malik, Major Malik Muhammad, along with the digital, um, the USB drive with the digital evidence. Mr. Lane, the deposition transcripts of detectives Chelsea Copsall and Scott Lowen were um, purportedly sent to you on August 1st. Did you receive those from Ms. Cashman? Yes. Okay, were they a part of the um, two USB drives that we addressed on August 5th? You have the smaller one, which was everything you digitized from the two boxes, and then you have the larger one of other materials that you had been given previously. No, but I do have a drive that I can put them on Okay, if you could make sure, sir, that when you drop off the other two things, digital copies, I know Ms. Boone has identified that she has physical copies, but I'd like to give her digital copies just in case. Um, State, do you have any questions with regard to the court's directive to Mr. Lane regarding the hard copies, depositions of the detectives, or the um, digital evidence the state may seek to admit in trial? No, no. All right. Ma'am, do you have any questions for Mr. Lane regarding those three items? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can Mr. Lane That's be first. released? Uh, yes. Okay. If you want to head up, can he be released, ma'am? Um, I guess I'll see you at nine. Okay. Sir, if you could <laughs> endeavor to do that today, okay. I would greatly appreciate it. Math. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. All right. The next matter this morning is the defendant's motion for defendant's reasonable freedom and movement by allowing her to be unshackled, unhandcuffed, to function equally and comfortably while utilizing the courtroom that was hand filed with the court on August 5, 2024. Courts have the opportunity to review that motion um, and the law regarding restraints. Um, State, do you have any positions at this time with regard to the defense's motion? Your Honor, uh in speaking with uh, courtroom security, we would oppose the motion, and we have uh, Corporal uh, Gavin Lowton available to uh, supplement uh, this court's uh, knowledge on the issue. 
Okay. So, ma'am, we're going to have a hearing on your motion. The state will call the corporal. He will uh, be inquired by the state as to some concerns that they may have, and you'll be given the opportunity to ask him questions or cross-examine him after the state's concluded asking any questions. Do you have any questions about that process? Is that today? That will be happening right now. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you have any questions about that process? I don't. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and call your witness. State. State will call Gavin Wilson. Okay. So what I, oh, sorry guys, my bad. Hitting the wrong, there we go. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so attorney Sarah Lenny Boone is going to have her first opportunity to do a cross-examination. Oh, Lordy. Okay. So this is the freedom to move with... Out cu without cuffs, handcuffs. I don't know if she's going to talk about the you know, the ankles, the shackles. I guess we will find out. Sir, good morning. Can you state and spell your name for the record for me? Uh, Gavin Alton, G-A-V-I-N, L-L-U-T-A-N. All right, thank you. State, you may proceed. Good morning, sir. Good morning. And what is it that you do for a living? Uh, I work for the Orange County Sheriff's Office as a uh, deputy sheriff. And to what area of the Sheriff's Office are you assigned? Uh, court and security. And how long have you uh, worked that assignment? Uh, four or five years now. And tell us, what are some of your duties within that assignment? I supervise the... Uh, deputies in two felony courtrooms and one civil courtroom. And are you familiar with the defendant in this particular case? Uh, just through research that I've done on her, I don't have any personal knowledge for the defendant. You're lucky, man. And Let me just tell you, you're lucky. What, in regards to that uh, research into the defendant, uh, what is your position uh, as the head of security regarding her uh, request to be free from shackles. I do not believe she should be free of shackles. And why is it that you have come to that conclusion? Um, based on her current charge of second degree, uh, second degree murder, uh, she also has a previous uh, domestic arrest for battery by strangulation. She Ooh. has three separate incidents at the jail for non-compliance where she was told to attend her court hearings, or scheduled court hearings, and she refused to do so. And then even when the corrections officers told her she could be charged with contempt of court, she still refused to attend those hearings. Oh, uh, uh, boy. Kind of, uh, when you combine all that, I mean, it shows a propensity for violence and not wanting to follow uh, lawful commands and orders of law enforcement personnel. Um, what um, what accommodations uh, can be made in order to um, keep concealed uh, the fact that she is uh, shackled or restrained during trial? So when the defendant is here, she would just be in leg restraints. She wouldn't have the belly chains. She wouldn't have handcuffs on. We've, modif we've modified the leg restraints by wrapping tape around the chains. So even if she's to make motion or movement, it wouldn't make noise to the jury as to that she's got restraints on. Um, she would be brought in and sat at the uh, defense table prior to the jury coming in and being seated so they wouldn't see her walk in with restraints on. And there's a panel in front of the uh, defense table that prevents the jury from seeing that she's got uh, leg restraints on. Your I don't believe I have any uh, further questions at this time. Oops, sorry. So it sounds like pretty much what Daryl had. You know, he had his shackles. Of course, he claimed he had a shock device, but we know he didn't. So let's see what she's going to say about this. I'm sure she's going to have some things to say because she's always right. Thank you. Ma'am, do you have any questions for Officer Logan? I do. Go ahead. 
first off, um, in your, in quotes, research that you've done on me. Ooh, the, ooh, uh, well, oh, I'm getting so, oh. violence case. Did you hear her say in your incorrect research? That is so snotty. I'm going to tell you right now, of course, I would be a very biased juror, but I can guarantee you if I was sitting there and I heard her say something like that, it would piss me off. She's definitely more subtle than Daryl. Oh, the, 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 mm, the, what am I trying to say? The snark really comes across. You're incorrect. I'm telling you, everybody's wrong. She's right. That I was charged with, the felony with strangulation was dropped. I don't know if you were aware of that in your research. Yes, so I was never charged with that. Um, also, what three hearings is it that I supposedly missed on what dates? Supposedly. I'll have to find out those here. I've never missed a court date. In the almost five years that I've been here, I've never. I've never argued. I've never hesitated. Did I object to the form of the question, Your Honor? Mm -hmm. I'm going to sustain the objection. Ma'am, you have to ask one fact per question. And like in Daryl's trial, when she just started going on like that, wouldn't that be considered testifying? Wouldn't they say, objection, she's testifying, she can't testify? It sounded like to me she was testifying because she's trying to tell her the truth. And every, everything is going to be out of her mouth, supposed and alleged. And just her attitude, the man, the, the man there, don't condemn him. He's just reading the report. And she's so, she's the one with a snotty attitude. Not Patricia Cashman. Good gosh. I am prepared to uh, give her the dates. Yeah. On September 15, 2023, uh, that was one of the times you refused to attend. October 16, 2023, and January 28, 2021. And do you know what those were specifically for? Uh, for court attendance, wherever you were scheduled for that day. For a hearing or pretrial or withdrawal? Oh my God. I don't know. It was just, this is just information from the jail where the corrections officer said you refused to attend your hearings. So is that on record that I have supposedly refused these three dates to appear in At court? The jail, yes. Who is your contact, please? I've never missed a date. This is a database that I got the information from. Do you know when it was last updated? It's five and nine. Okay, so do you know how I have never missed a court date? Uh, objection. The present date. I don't know specifically what these three dates are for. You should just be asking uh, questions. For me to objection. supposedly uh, deny Object. going. Do you know the name of the officers for each one? You do? Yes. Please. For the September 15, 2023, it is uh, Corrections Officer Portia Hines. Could you spell her last name, please? H-I-N-E-S. And you said the date was 9-15-23? Right. Okay. And if you would like, I can read her comments in her report. Sure. Approximately midnight, I informed inmate Boone, Sarah, that she was scheduled to appear in court today. Inmate Boone uh, stated she did not want to attend court. I advised her that her absence could result in being held in contempt of court. Inmate Boone stated she understood and continued in her decision to refuse. Corporal Hal Cameron was notified. The support is being generated for informational purposes. But it doesn't say what it was that I supposedly refused. Uh, to attend court. It doesn't say specifically what you're hearing. To refuse. Okay. What's this? Second one, uh, it'll be Officer Christy Green. And what is this date for? I'm sorry, what's that? Which date is it that you're referencing? That's going to be October 16, 2023. Okay, and I'm sorry, the name? Green, G-R-E-E-N-E. -E -E. And what was the first initial, please? K. G-R-E-E-N-E. -E -E. Yes. 10, 16, 23. Yes. Okay. And the third one is January 28, 2021. And the officer is Jasmine Scribner. S-C-R-I-B-N-E-R. 
What are the comments, please, for uh, Green? I'm sorry. For approximately 300 hours, I advised inmate Boone, Sarah, that she was on the schedule to attend downtown court. Inmate Boone stated she did not want to attend court. I informed inmate Boone that if she fails to attend, she could be held in contempt of court. Inmate Boone acknowledged she understood and continued with the decision to refuse to attend court. A formal board at the Booking and Release Center uh, transport officer was notified. All proper not notations were made in the IMS. Okay. And January 28th? Approximately 0334 hours, inmate Boone Sarah was advised she has downtown court and to start getting ready. Inmate Boone stated she did not want to attend court. I informed inmate Boone that she could be charged with contempt of court. Inmate Boone still refused to attend court. Corporal Hall and the Booking and Release Center transportation officer were notified of this incident. This report is being generated for informational purposes only. And all of those comments were made on the day of that I supposedly refused. I don't know when they entered that. It doesn't state in their IMS? Gosh. In their it, program? It probably it might, but I didn't take that information out. Okay. So I'm trying to figure out how it I know all three corporals and the the sergeant, so I've never refused court. I don't there's no reason for me to want Objection. <laughs> See, she's going to fight everything. And to me, well, if she gets what she wants, her freedom to move or whatever, but I just wonder if she's going to focus on every little thing because she's, it's more, she's more worried about being wrong about anything than she's kind of dumb like Daryl in that aspect than trying to, you know, think about her case, her suitcase case but she's gonna nitpick every single thing I, I always I, I hope that somebody substains as Daryl would say to read his court I'm gonna object as to ask the answer I'm gonna sustain the objection okay Daryl Green Pay attention to the bearded man in the picture the beard was actually painted on when the wife found out her Let it go, Sarah. So the domestic violence, the original, was dropped. I was never charged with that. Hmm. Object is to relevance, Your Honor. Overruled. You can answer the question, sir. Okay. Um, it was dropped. You were charged and arrested. I don't know why the state dropped it. It could be because both parties, based on the report that I read, did not want to cooperate, so they probably didn't have information to go for. Um, with the charges. That does not mean that you didn't commit the act. It just meant the state felt that they didn't have a case that they could win. What is your definition of probably did not cooperate? Was it a fact or you're just guessing? Oh it's it. You're all going to object to the question. Objection sustained. Oh boy. Can you imagine how this is going to be in court? I mean, the, the big court, you know? The charges were dropped for Mr. Torres and for myself was because we did cooperate and there was not enough information. And we received no. documentation in the mail, both of us, for the reasons why it was dropped. Your Honor, I'm going to object this to the form of the question. It's not a question. It's a sustained. That's right. Sustained. Forgive me, because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I'm trying to provide my information for what it is that I'm being accused of. I don't accused. know if I'm doing it the wrong way, apparently. Oh, my. So. I really can't with her. I'm sorry, guys, for stopping. But what I'm being accused of. She is so. I. I think it was Dr. Barry in her video said. At the last hearing, she says, I don't think. And I have to agree with her. That she will take a plea deal. Because she thinks she's so right. That's not, that's not a direct quote from Dr. Barry, but she just said because she's so certain she's right, something to that effect. And I would be entitled to agree with her.